We're looking at section 8.3 with our hypothesis testing on proportions, going a little more in depth into problems. Uh, if we look at number 10, okay. Uh, number 10 here, the brief description talks about in data set 20 in appendix B lists uh, data from 100 M and M. So we have um, N equals 100 M and M's. Uh, and then within this, we find that 8% of them, so basically 8 out of 10, are, are I'm sorry, 8%, 8 out of 100, are brown. Okay, so we're talking about brown here. Uh, it says use a 0 0.05 significance level. So we're going to use a significance level. Um, alpha equals 0 0.05 um, to test the claim that Mars Candy Company uh, has a percentage of M&Ms equal to 13%. Okay, so the Mars Candy Company claims brown M&Ms equals 13%. Uh, and basically they're taking their basic bag, dividing by the amount of colors in there, and they should be equally spread out. Um, so in, in this given scenario here, we're given out of 100, we have 8% that are brown. So as we're continuing this, we want to test this. So one of the things we want to look at here is we want to look at the simple fact that we have a hypothesis test going on. So our null hypothesis, okay, so the null hypothesis is they're claiming that it equals 13%, okay? So the claim is our null hypothesis, so that means the alternative hypothesis is going to be not 13% because once again if the claims here we can't have any part of the claim and we have to exclude everything that is there so do realize that we could have above or below on here so once again this will be a two tail okay uh, assessment in here so as we look at this we have a significance level of 0 0.05 and it's a two tail uh, one that's going on here um, so as we start considering this, we have many different things that start going into this. Uh, we could start considering uh, the fact that we could relate to what's happening here. So we could go through by hand and work this. Uh, some of the main aspects we should be looking at is um, this is a 90% test. Once again, this comes from page 399 going 0.05 significance. Um, and a two tail, sorry, 95%. I better look better carefully here. So 95% uh, style test on here. So a 95th percentile talks about critical values, uh, once again, in our Z equals, in this case, plus or minus 1.96. Uh, this is coming from our table on there for a 95th percentile ranking once again because it's a two-tail test um, significance of 0 0.05 so that's our critical value that we will be on here uh, so if we start considering what's happening on here I'm going to bring in my TI Inspire CX calculator um, as you can see you can see my webcam right there that I'm recording on uh, if we go into the calculator feature in here once again you could either go in uh, let me just go back you can go down into an app if you want in the calculator feature or you could bring in just a regular calculator that it's referring to. Uh, what we would want to do is we want to go into our menu and our statistics uh, and then we are going to choose stat tests. Okay, Under the stat tests we are working with a proportion so that's where that prop comes in right here. Let's see if I leave my hand out a little better. Uh, so we see that we have one prop Z test. Okay, so if I come down here to this one prop Z test and I hit enter, 
it's going to ask me for a couple of things. So what the P0 or P0 looks here, or PO, uh, uh, is referencing what is our null hypothesis. So what are we testing towards? Um, so we're testing towards the fact that we would have 0.13. Okay, you're not going to be able to enter the percent in here, uh, so we'll use the decimal value. Um, now it's given that what is our trial stating? Okay, uh, so in this case we're given 8% out of 100, so that would be 8 out of 100 total. So we have to enter in our actual number versus a percentage in here. And then down here we have a couple different options. Once again, depending upon uh, what we're referencing towards. So on this side over here we have our null hypothesis and then we talk about is, al is our alternative hypothesis bigger? So are we going to be larger than the number? Do we not equal the number or are we less than the number? In this case we don't equal it. Uh, so we select this and then we get all our values in here. If we notice we have our z-score of negative 1.48 uh, six, seven, five, uh, P value here. So we don't have to go through the formula to find all these things. So what we would do here is we would come back and we would state on here that our test value, um, Z equals negative 1.486 uh, so four nine. Um, we could also come here and state our P value our p-value is 0.137. Um, so now that we have these values, basically we, we computed our test. We figured out what's going on here. Uh, so now we can figure out, well, are we going to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis? So there are two ways that we can start thinking about this. The first way is referencing back to that critical value. Um, if we think about what was going on here, we would have this scenario where we would be considering over here, we would have our 1.96 and then we would have our negative 1.96. Uh, so in this scenario, if I get out my red marker, this would be our critical area. Okay, so if we got any z-score that was in here, we would show that, hey, this is extreme. Okay, so th this is extreme that we have to reject the null hypothesis. But what we found out is we found out our test statistic is a negative 1.49. So that's right here. It's not in our critical area. Uh, so we would come back then and we would come back here and, and we would state that we fail to reject. the null hypothesis okay once again because we're showing that our z-score for this specific test or this scenario that we're given here based off of this result is not in the critical area it's in our normal area here so it's showing that hey the, the, this could be true but remember we never state that we agree with it we're gonna fail to reject that it is okay um, so even though this one bag was 8%, 13% does seem like it is reasonable within what's going on here. Uh, the other method to look at this would be our p-value. Okay, so once again our p-value, uh, our significance was 0.5. So we see that this p-value right here is greater than 0 0.05. So that's significance level of 0 0.05. Uh, anytime our p-value is larger than this, it's saying this has a bigger area. So the area right here, uh, let me go like this. This area that would be here, okay, so what we're looking at here on this orange area is 0.137, where the critical value area right here would be that 0 0.05 as we're referencing in there. Um, so considering that factor, we see that, hey, this has more area too, so when it's larger, so that p-value is larger than our significance, we also fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, so now because we fail to reject the null hypothesis on this one, uh, we gotta have our statement, okay? 
So basically, well, you're not going to agree. Remember, um, their statement was that they equal 13% in the bank. So their statement was a null hypothesis. So we're not going to support this. But what we're going to state is we're going to state that there is sufficient evidence. Okay. To... Uh, Warrant rejection. I'm sorry, there is not, there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that Mars Candy Company has 13% brown M&Ms. Okay. So once again, there's not evidence to reject this claim. So the claim was that they equal 13% and we're showing that, hey, we're, we're in that area to where we're almost supporting it, but remember, because the claim is part of our null hypothesis, we never support the null hypothesis because that's what we're testing towards. So what we'll state is there, that there's not evidence to reject it, okay? Um, so it's kind of like that double negative that we start working with in here. If we look at another example here, let's come over and let's look at problem number 12. Okay, on problem number 12, we talk about plain seats. <clears throat> Okay, so it says, in a 3M privacy filters poll, 806 adults were asked to identify their favorite seat when fly. Um, 492 chose the window. Okay, so if we consider what's happening here, we'll consider the fact that now N equals 806, uh, and then X is equaling... 492. <coughs> uh, here it tells us to use a significance level. So we have a significance level. Um, alpha equals 0 0.01 uh, to test the claim that the majority of adults prefer window seats when flying. So our claim is a majority of adults uh, prefer uh, spell prefer good thing I teach math and not English because spelling has never been a strong suit window seats not to mention writing as you found out when they fly okay so we start considering what's happening on here we want to write our null hypothesis so let's uh, change colors here so we can kind of distinguish a little bit better maybe a little better than we did here so our null hypothesis and then we're going to have our alternative hypothesis okay so if we're considering here remember one of these has to be towards uh, what the claim is now what does it mean to have a majority okay we talk about a majority. Majority means above 50%. Okay? So, above 50%. Okay? So, that 50% is really where we start looking at here. So, we say that our null hypothesis, P equals 50% or 0.5. Uh, so, then our alternative hypothesis would be P is greater than. 0.5. So we see now that our claim is now siding with our alternative hypothesis rather than the null hypothesis. Because once again, this is just above 50%, so that means we're greater than 50%. Um, now we could have went less than, but once again, that's not testing towards what our claim would be in here. Uh, so basically, we're saying that our true statement that we're testing towards is that it equals 50%. Uh, and then we'll start 
uh, calculating throughout here. So what does this all mean in terms of a critical value? Okay, so if I come here and I look at a critical value, okay, so the critical value. Once again, we have 0 0.01 and we're testing right here. Uh, so this means that we are a one tail test on this. Okay, so we have a one tail test with our critical value that we're in reference towards. Um, so if we go to page 399, we see that a one tail test of 0 0.01 is talking about a 98% confidence level. So this is once again our confidence level. Okay, so if a 98% confidence level, remember that confidence level talks about everything going within here. Um, so as we start considering what's happening on our normal curve, um, we're referencing once again this part over here uh, in which the 98% confidence level is always broken out above and below. So we're talking 1% within here. Uh, so when we go to our table then, on this one, because uh, if I kind of go 98% confidence is not found down here, we have a 99%, 95%, and 90%. We actually have to go to the table and figure out what's going on. Uh, so as we go through this table, what we're going to look for is we're going to look for where do we have 0.9900, okay? So we see right here, kind of zooming in on that, um, if I can get my marker here to kind of slide in. We see that right here we have 0 0.9900. So if I extend out, I see that's 2.3. Uh, and then coming up here, um, this would be then another 3. So we're seeing that our critical value uh, would be Z equals 2.33. Now we wouldn't do a negative one because once again we're not two-tail, we're here. So this is our 2.33. Okay, so this is what we're testing towards. Once again, that would give us 1% as an area in here or 0 0.01 for this area that's going into this um, scenario. Uh, we then would come to our calculator. Um, as we come to our calculator, um, we would, are going to do another test on this. So once again, on our calculator, we're going to perform a test. So option is menu. Okay, when we're in that menu, if I get that glare off here, that did not help any. It worked when I slid my calculator over here. Um, so, kind of going through this once again, we're going to go down to statistics. Uh, once again, stat tests, because we're doing hypothesis tests. And in this case, once again, we're doing a one prop C test. We're talking about a one input, so we aren't comparing two things together here. We'll do that in later sections. Uh, and we're talking about proportion, and proportion references a, a Z test into this. Um, so once we're in here, we're going to talk about our null hypothesis. Okay. So our null hypothesis is talking about equaling 0.5, so we're going to go 0.5, uh, and then it asks, well, what happened on a study or a trial that we did? So we had 492 out of a total of 806 people surveyed in here, uh, and now we're going to look at this, and remember, our alternative hypothesis is talking greater than 0.5, so that means our proportion that we're referencing in here for our alternative is greater than what the null hypothesis is stating. So we're going to select this right here. Once again, this tells us that's a one tail above, so we know what to reference in here. Um, so then they give us our good old scores. Okay, So we see that we have these scores in here. Um, so I'm going to come back and now I'm going to write down what our test statistics are. Okay, So our test statistics are right here. I'll come back Ooh, not red. Um, we have a Z score that equals, once again, this is our test statistic, uh, not a critical value on here, test statistic of 
two, six, nine, so seven. Uh, and then we're also given a p-value in here. Uh, that p-value, uh, denoted by p-v-a-l, is 1.8155 uh, e to the negative, so there are capital E, so it's not the number E. So we've got scientific notation. So basically we're given 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because it's a negative 10, and then 1, 8, 2. So here's our p-value, okay? So if we remember, the area here was based off that significance of being 0 0.01. We're stating that we have 0 0.90s for area, so we're way over here. I'm not even on my graph pretty much anymore. If we think about if zero was right here and this was 6.2, that's that's off on my desk over here. I mean, I have to start drawing uh, um, on my desk, which then my wife probably wouldn't be too impressed with that, so I'm not going to. Uh, but we see that, hey, what's ever going on here, we're way over here. Okay, so 6.27, or our little area is that uh, 1.8. 2 times 10 to the negative 10th power. Okay, once again, we leave that scientific notation. Um, so, our area, or our p-value is smaller. Um, our critical value is, our, our test value is in the critical area, or is above this area. Uh, so now we come back and we conclude this, okay? So we conclude here now, and we'll state that we are going to reject the null hypothesis because this is p-value is less than our significance, or our test score is in the critic or past the critical area in here for that critical value. Uh, we're going to reject this null hypothesis. Uh, so now, because we rejected the null hypothesis um, and, and really um, we can even phrase this one a little differently so I'll show you kind of what it is that we're extremely over okay so there is uh, once again sufficient evidence to support the claim that a majority of adults prefer window seats when flying. Okay, so once again, we kind of use that sufficient evidence. Um, if this would have been like a 2.34 um, and was very close, then we would just said there is evidence. Okay, so sufficient's kind of used. Uh, we could have said there is much sufficient evidence to kind of twist things up a little bit to state that, hey, we are really up here. But once again, just kind of don't go overboard because if you try tying too much into this, um, depends upon the study, it might not have the same results um, overall, but it still might have the evidence to support it. So uh, do try to stick to the given protocol on this.